Hi, hello. Welcome back to this video lecture series on mechanics of materials. So in my previous presentation, I have explained what is that bending stress and a formula that the bending formula had derived, but also has solved one simple numerical. And I have also explained what is that section modulus and other things. Now, I would like to continue with some more numericals. So here, a rectangular section B, whose depth is equal to twice the width is simply supported over a span of six meters. So that means it is a rectangular cross section. The beam is of rectangular cross section with the depth that is depth is represented here as capital H is equal to two times its width. That width is B. Therefore, H is equal to 2B. And the span of that one is six meters. And if it has a if it has to carry UDL of 10 kilo Newton per meter. So we have uniformly distributed load of 10 kilo Newton per meter over the entire span. In addition to that, we have a central point load of 20 kilo Newton. So we have to find out cross-sectional dimension required if the allowable stress is 10 Newton per mm square. So whatever the numerical is on bending stress, all the time we have to remember that m by i is equal to sigma by y. So for the given uh, beam, so for the given loading, we will get the value of bending moment m or mb. And for the given, uh, uh, what is that one? y, y is nothing but, since it is symmetrical rectangular section, that is a rectangular is a symmetrical section, that is y is equal to h by two, that is b. So M by I, I is nothing but, since it is rectangular for rectangular section, I is equal to BH cube by 12. So B and H relation is given. So all those things will be in terms of, and in addition, Sigma is given stress. So if you search to those values, unknown will be that B. So we can forget the value of B for the given stress. Once we get that, B, then we can find out H, H is equal to 2B. Now for that one, we know that for a simply supported beam, so the maximum bending moment at the center will be WL by four for a simply supported beam with point load at the center. In addition to that, we also have a simply supported beam with uniformly distributed load for which the formula is WL square by eight standard relation. So total bending moment M is given by WL square by eight plus WL by four. So this W is nothing but load per meter length that is given uniformly distributed load of 10 kilo Newton per meter for a span of length six meters. So WL square by eight. And here that W point load is given as 20 kilo Newton at the center. So 20 into L is nothing but six divided by four. I repeat, as the loads or one is uniformly distributed load with simple supports and another one is point load at the center for a simply supported beam, that combined bending moment M is equal to WL square by eight plus WL by four. By substituting the values of given small W and capital W, small W is nothing but load per meter length and this is the total point load. So by for six meters length, length is six meters. If we substitute those things, we will get bending moment as 75 kilo Newton meter. So to convert that into millimeter and Newton, so into 10 to the power of six, therefore 75 to 10 to the power of six Newton millimeter. Now, what is that formula we have? M by I is equal to sigma by Y. So M by I is equal to sigma by y. So that i by y can be written as z. i by y is nothing but section modulus. And for a rectangular section, we know for a rectangular section, z is nothing but bh square by 6. And b and h relation is given. h is equal to 2b. So if we substitute and simplify, we get z is equal to 4b cube by 6. Now by substituting those things in that m by i is equal to sigma by y, or sigma is equal to m divided by i by y. i by y is nothing but z. So with that, 
by substituting the value of bending moment m as well as that section modulus a b 4 b q by 6 here and sigma is given as 10 if we simplify we'll get the value of b breadth as 224 mm and that depth is nothing but two times that that will be 448 mm so next so again we have to find out what is that one we have to draw that or plot the bending stress distribution for the given i section so by looking at the given i section we can easily make out it is symmetric i section even in problem it is mentioned that as a beam with symmetric i section of flange width flange is always that top portion so this is flange and even this is also a flange so between that we have web so sometimes they may not give that figure so with the given data we have to draw this diagram of i section so that is flange of 180 by total depth from here to here it is 310 and flange and web thickness 15 mm this is also 15 mm this is also 15 this is web this and these are this and this are flanges subject to bending moment here bending moment m is given as 120 kilo newton meter that is nothing but 120 into 10 to the power of 6 newton millimeter so determine its the bending stress distribution along the depth of the section so this and all will not be given only for students understanding this figure has been given this is nothing but i sectional uh, i sectional beam so now again what is that we have to draw that stress distribution we have to find the stress in tension and stress in compression for symmetrical section half of that from neutral axis half will be under tension half will be under compression and the neutral axis will be at the center so therefore for this one neutral axis will be at a distance of 155 mm therefore y top is equal to y bottom is equal to 155 mm so when it is not mentioned we can take either without knowing where that when which direction it is subjected to bending moment we can take either top or bottom as tensile or compressive and vice versa so now a symmetrical section how to find out that moment of inertia that already had given that relation that i is equal to bh cube minus bh cube divided by 12 this capital b is nothing but breadth and capital h is nothing but total depth small b is nothing but so total this capital b minus center one that whatever is given that is thickness that is total capital p minus t will give that small b h is nothing but total h minus two times that thickness will give us that uh, what we call that h so knowing those values by substituting b is nothing but this length and h is nothing but from here to here and small b is nothing but as i told you from here to here it is b by 2 plus b by 2 that is total capital b minus the thickness will give that small b we will get small b h is nothing but from here to here so that total okay total depth minus this two times this thickness if it is same thickness no problem if it is different thickness as that of that web then minus two times small t if it is different thickness minus two times that capital t will give us that h by substituting those values we will get moment of inertia i so now that is what is substituted here so that capital b is nothing but top portion that is 180 b d capital d is nothing but or h h is nothing capital h is nothing but t10 bh cube when a small b is 165 into small h is nothing but 280 cube divided by 12 if we simplify we'll get moment of inertia for total axis as 1.45 into 10 to the power of 8 mm to the power of 4 now to find out the bending stress we have that formula m by i is equal to sigma by y so therefore bending stress at the top flange sigma is equal to m y divided by i 
where m is nothing but bending moment that is given as 120 uh, kilo newton meter that is nothing but 120 to 10 to the power of 6 and y is nothing but distance from centroidal axis distance from centroidal axis to the farthest layer so here centroidal axis and neutral axis will coincide in case of straight beam so for symmetrical section half of that total depth will be that value of y so here y we know m we know i we have calculated if we substitute we will get that bending stress as 128.3 mpa so now we know that at neutral axis there won't be any stress or strain therefore when there is no stress or strain here the stress will be zero sigma is zero at neutral axis now if we consider the bottom portion as compressive then corresponding to that y is equal to minus 155 if we substitute retaining all the other values as same even y is also same only that sign is different with that we will get minus 128.3 mpa so for the i section at the side we can draw this stress distribution this is what is asked so if we take tensile this side compressive on other side now that the previous problem is on symmetrical i section here this problem is on t section so t section we can easily make out so this is symmetric about y axis not about x axis since it is symmetric about y axis we have to find out y bar and then moment of inertia about neutral axis so here a caster and beam with the t section of power of flange 150 mm by 20 mm this is nothing but flange 150 by 20 and web of web is nothing but this one 20 mm by 80 mm is subjected to a concentrated load w as shown in figure this is subjected to load w at the free end okay as shown in figure so now because these two are support and this is free end determine the safe value of w if the maximum tensile compressive stresses are not to exceed 40 newton per mm square and 70 newton per mm square here again whenever it is a problem on bending so we have to make use of the m by i is equal to sigma by y so for the given dimensions for t section we can find out y in tension and y in compression in addition to that we can also find out what is that one moment of inertia of this t section about neutral axis we know i we know y and stresses are given with that we can find out bending moment with respect to that respective stresses given tensile and compressive once we get that from that bending moment we can find out value of w so for that most important thing is now itself i tell you so what is that bending moment bending moment at the a is zero bending moment at c is zero end moment but bending moment will be maximum at point b so that is w into 0.75 meters or this ra into this distance for which you have to find out ra and all but we know one concept that bending moment whether we consider all that moments to the left of that point or to the right of that point the moments about that point must be same therefore since i have to find out w i'll take moment as w into 0.75 that is 0.75 into 10 to the power of 3 mm that is 0.75 okay 0.75 10 to the power of 3 w me uh, w uh, mm a newton mm sorry newton mm that is bending moment now so this is only again for reference so this is a beam of t cross section so now if we consider first we have to find out y top so from the figure we can make out that the top portion will be under tension and bottom will be under compression when the load is acting on the beam downwards this top portion will be under tension here this is under compression now taking this as a reference 
this is say section 1 this is section 2 so y top is equal to y is in or y bar is equal to we can write y bar or y top whatever it may be is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 divided by a1 plus a2 a1 is nothing but area of this that is 150 into 20 area of this rectangle is 150 into 20 so y1 is nothing but center of gravity of this that is 20 by 2 20 by 2 that is 10 then area of second one 20 into 80 20 into 80 area of second section and center of gravity of that will be of that rectangle will be 20 plus 80 by 2 20 plus 80 by 2 is 40 40 plus 20 is 60 so whole divided by a1 plus a2 a1 is nothing but 150 into 20 plus this is nothing but 20 into 80 if you simplify you will get 27.4 mm so now so much since this is unsymmetrical section and we have to find out moment of inertia about neutral axis whenever we have unsymmetrical sections then total moment of inertia about neutral axis let us represent that as i i is equal to i1 plus i2 i1 is nothing but moment of inertia of section 1 about neutral axis y2 is moment of inertia about neutral axis of second section so therefore i1 plus i2 what is i1 i1 is equal to icg1 plus a1h1 square what is that icg1 icg1 is nothing but moment of inertia of section 1 about its central axis icg2 is nothing but moment of inertia of section 2 about its central axis then what is that h1 h1 is nothing but difference of y top and y1 y1 we have 10 y top we have 27.4 that difference here also difference of y2 and y top y2 is nothing but 60 that is 20 plus 80 by 2 that is 60 and y top is nothing but 27.4 from the larger value we have to subtract the smaller that's why we take it as difference so therefore moment of inertia about neutral axis i n a is equal to i1 i c g1 i c g1 is nothing but moment of inertia about its centroidal axis for a rectangle will be b d cube by 12 for this section b is nothing but 150 d is nothing but 20 b d cube by 12 plus so i see jo a1 a1 is nothing but area of first one that is 150 into 20 then h1 is nothing but as i have already told you difference of y top and y1 y1 is 10 y top is 27.4 so the difference whole square is nothing but h1 similarly for i2 icg2 icg2 means bd cube b is 20 d is nothing but 80 20 to 80 by 12 plus a2 a2 is nothing but 20 into 80 20 to 80 into h2 square h2 is nothing but difference of y2 y2 is 60 and y top is 27.4 whole square so we must be careful most of the time we will forget that square so if we simplify we get moment of inertia i is equal to 3.56 into 10 to the power of 6 mm to the power of 4 now bending stress in tension is given sigma we know m by i is equal to sigma by y we know the value of y we know the value of i we know the value of sigma so then m will be in terms of this 750 w newton millimeter so by substituting sigma top is equal to m into y top divided by i m means nothing but 750 w into y top is 27.4 divided by i value we have found out that we will get it as 5.77 into 10 minus 3 w mpa so now maximum stress at top fiber is given so as i told you it is subjected to tensile and it is given as 40 so by equating that sigma here 40 is equal to 5.77 into 10 minus 3 w with that value of w we get similarly for bottom 
Y bottom will be total depth. Total depth is given. That is 80 plus 20, 100. So in that 100, if you subtract that top Y value, that is Y top 27.4, we'll be left with 72.6 mm. So corresponding to that, again, we have the making use of that relation. Sigma bottom is equal to 750 W into that Y bottom. Y bottom is nothing but 72.6 divided by I. With that, we will get 0 0.0153 WMPA. So now, for bottom also, the stress is given as 70 compressive stress. So that compressive is negative, but just since it is opposite direction, we will show the direction here. But magnitude, we need not consider that sign here. Therefore, 70 is equal to this value. With that, we will get the value of W. Now, out of these two values, W is equal to 6932.4 and 4575.2. Out of those two, whichever is less, that we have to take because that beam should withstand safely. Therefore, the minimum load we are taking. So, the, for corresponding to that minimum load, because this 4575.2 is obtained corresponding a stress of 70 ampere bottom. So again, so for this, what is that? That stress at the top fiber we have to find out. So that is stress at the top of fiber is given by 5.77 in 10 to the power of minus three W. W value, if you substitute this one here, you will get the stress corresponding to that as 26.4 MPA. But that stress given is 40 and the stress induced 26.4 is less than that allowable, hence it is safe. So to draw the distribution, we have to draw the given cross section. At the side, we have to draw that vertical equal to that height. And we have to mark that neutral axis point. And tensile, if you are taking this side, tensile stress, compressive other side. Here 26.4, here 70. And we have to complete this stress distribution. So I'll continue with some more numericals in my next presentation. Thank you.